Hey everybody, uh, this lesson is for our uh, worksheet number one for the final review for Integrated Math 1. So hopefully you can hang in there. Sorry for the long videos. They do take a long time for me to make. This one probably took five hours to make. So I'm, I'm, I'm doing my best. I got two done. I'll, I'm working on three and then we got one more. All right, this one says uh, solve. So what I'm going to first do is distribute, uh, whoops, I already got a cursor there. I'm going to distribute this negative through, so negative x, and then negative times negative is a plus, a plus 1, okay? Let's do that first, okay? And then uh, we're going to put, um, uh, let's see, I don't know if I put, uh, I probably subtracted 5x from both sides and then subtracted 1 from both sides. If I didn't, I'll, t I'll do something else. Uh, oh, no, I didn't. Okay, good, good for you. All right, I did the symmetric property, so all I did is I flipped these around the equal sign, okay, because I like to have the bigger x on the left-hand side. Okay, so here we go. Now I'm going to go plus x, plus x, and I'm going to go minus 11, minus 11. It would have worked the other way, too. Okay, so then 6x equals negative 10, and so when we divide by 6, I like uh, reduced fractions. 2 goes into negative 10, negative 5 times, and 2 goes into 6 3 times, so negative 5 thirds, okay? All right. Okay, this one says evaluate when x equals negative 12. So I'm going to plug in x equals negative 12 right there, so 2 times negative 12 squared, and then minus 6, okay? And then we got to square negative 12 first, so negative 12 times negative 12 is a 144. Remember, negative times negative is a positive. 288 minus 6, and so we get 282. Okay, easy enough. All right, so here, let's say uh, for f of x equals negative 3x plus 5, what is the value for x when f of x equals 38? So I'm going to put 38 right here and solve for this x right here. That's what it's asking for. So there we go. We're going to subtract 5 from both sides, and I get uh, 33 equals negative 3x. So divide by 3, we get x equals negative 11. Okay, now you have stuff that looks just like this on your, on your final, okay? And it is multiple choice. So um, these questions are very similar. Okay, so we're going to graph these on a number line. Now, because this has an equal sign right there, we're going to do a closed circle when we solve. So minus 4, minus 4, I'm going to do that first right there. Okay, and then uh, so negative 6 goes into 24. Now, careful, you guys. When we divide both sides by a negative 6, it flips that inequality. Whenever you multiply or divide, by a negative, it always flips that inequality around. So now it's greater than or equal to. So we get a is greater than or equal to negative 4. Okay? All right, there's the graph. Sorry about the blurry number line. That's what uh, I found for us. Okay, so let's solve this guy. I'm going to subtract 22. Careful, negative 20 minus 22 is negative 42. Oh, sweetie, where is it? I got Lucy here. She always liked to play ball when I start talking on this computer. Lucy's my little dog I found in front of my classroom door two years ago. And so, um, anyways, I don't know where she is. I fell in love with her, and here she is. So she plays ball every time I find uh, I start talking on the computer. Okay, let's divide both sides by 7. So um, negative 42 divided by 7 is negative 6, okay? All right, here, plus 16 to both sides. Negative 36 plus 16 is negative 20, and then divide by 5. Now, I divided by 5, not negative 5, so it did not flip that inequality, so it's greater than negative 4. All right, let's solve this guy here. Okay, what I'm going to first do, I think, you guys, is combine 7y minus 4y is 3y, so this side is 3y plus 3. I might even distribute this negative 3 through. Let's see, did I do that? I did. Okay, so when I put the negative 3 through, remember, a negative 3 times 5 is, is negative 15. All right, so now we're going to combine those like terms right there, and then we're going to, okay, be careful, you guys. This is negative 3y right here, so to get rid of this, I'm going to go plus 3y, plus 3y, and to get rid of this, I'm going to go minus 3, minus 3. Okay, hang on a second. There we go. Throw on squeaky. Squeaky's no longer squeaking, so you can't hear squeaky. All right, so I'm doing that right there, and I'm going to divide by 6, and then uh, 3 goes into 15 five times, and 6 two times, so negative 5 halves, okay? All right, sorry, I go too fast. I'm sorry, you guys, so my kids complain. I go too fast all the time, so anyways, let me throw this one time while I'm pausing. I don't know if 
if you can hear that or not. Okay, let's. Uh, here's number uh, eight. Number eight, really? Yeah, that's all right. Number eight. Okay, so we're going to solve this. All right, so what I don't like about this is all those fractions, just like you don't. So let's look at all those denominators, you guys. And 2, 3, and 3, they all go into 6. So if we multiply everything times 6, times 6, times 6, it gets rid of all of those denominators. Okay, look, what happens right there? We get uh, 3 plus 4x greater than or equal to 2x, okay? Let's see, I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides and subtract 3 from both sides. And then divide by 2. So when we divide by 2, we get x is greater than or equal to negative 3 halves. Okay? All right, so find the slope, okay, of the line that goes through x1, y1, and x2, y2. So there's our slope formula right there. So we just do the second y minus the first y over the second x minus the first x. So I get... Uh, negative uh, 2 over 7, which is negative 2 sevenths, okay? All right, so uh, write an equation in point-slope form of a line that goes through 2, 1, and 3, 4. So point-slope form, you guys, is is y minus the, the y1 equals m times x minus x1. So we have to get m first. So let's get m. So 4 minus 1 over 3 minus 2, okay? So there that is right there. Okay, and so we get um, 4 minus 1 is 3, 3 minus 2 is 1, so the slope is 3. All right, now the next part is, here's point slope form. We know what m is, so 3 goes right there. We just have to plug in a known x and y value, whether it's this one or this one. Uh, I'm sorry, this x and this y, or this x and this y. I'm going to do both. There's two correct equations right there. It doesn't matter. Okay. Notice I put in um, I put in <laughs> I put in that y right here and that x right here and then over here I put in that y right here and then that x right here. Okay. Both of those are are correct. Okay. So here this says uh, rewrite the answer in number ten in slope intercept form. Okay. Now it doesn't matter which one you use. You'll get the same correct slope intercept form. Point slope form. There's infinitely many correct answers but slope intercept form there's one correct answer so check this out I'm going to do them both you guys and so on the first one we get uh, y minus 1 equals 3x minus 6 and then uh, the second one we get y minus 4 equals 3x minus 9 notice they're both 3x so here if we plus uh, we want to get it in y equals mx plus b form that's what slope intercept form is so plus 1 plus 1 or plus 4 plus 4 Get the same equation okay so it doesn't matter which one you use all right rewrite this in standard form okay standard form there it is down there standard form I'm looking at this so I want to get ax plus by equals c now standard form there's no fractions or decimals so the first thing I'm gonna do is multiply get rid of that and go times 4 times 4 times 4 okay get rid of that all right, gets rid of the fraction, and then we'll just add 3x to both sides. So there it is now in standard form, okay? All right, I'm going to throw the squeaky one more time. Find the slope. Okay, slope is rise over run. So here I'm going to do this. I'm looking at this point right here. So did I say negative? Uh, uh, oh, yeah, these are going by twos. Sorry, let's, let's highlight this, dude. Let's bring this guy a little bit. Oh, I can't. All right. Okay, um, so this is at 3 high, so if we go down 3 and go to the right 3, that's why it's negative 3 over 3. Okay, sure looks like it's down 2 to the right 2, but it's actually down 3 to the right 3. So anyways, and this is the worksheet that you guys have, so you're going to just have to check. These guys are going by 2s. Each square is going by 2, 4, 6, 8, and same on the x-axis. So here's 2, here's 4. Here's six, here's eight. So this one's going down a square and a half, which is down three over a square and a half, which is over three. So negative three over three is negative one. Okay, this one goes, same thing, it's going by two. So it's going up, here's three, five, six. It's going up six and then over two, four, five. So six fifths, I think, is that right? Yeah. All right, and then this one's going, uh, looks like it's up here at 2. I'm just looking at the y coordinate, so it's up at 2, so it drops down to negative, uh, negative 3, so it drops down 5, so negative 5, and then 
over 1, I think. Okay, so negative 5 over 1 is negative 5. Okay, so rise over run if they give you a picture. All right, so write an equation in point-slope form. So point-slope form is y minus y sub 1 equals m times x minus x sub 1. So what I did was is I used uh, this point right here. I used this for x, so that goes right here. And then this for y goes right here. That's an acceptable answer. Now, the, the, if it's a, a multiple choice uh, question, it might say y equals negative 1 times x minus 1, or maybe y equals negative parentheses x minus 1. What if we did this point? It'd be y minus 3 equals negative 1 times x minus a minus 2, or x plus 2, okay? So we could use that one. Okay, so for this one right here, um, I think I used this one first, so y minus a minus 3 is y plus 3 equals uh, 6 fifths times x minus 0. Okay, did I do that? Yeah. Now, you can just write 6 fifths times x if you want, or just minus 0, depending on what uh, the choice is. So it's called match the answer game. Or we can do this other point right here, this guy right here. So y minus 5 equals 6 fifths times, I'm sorry, did I say 5? y minus 3 equals 6 fifths times x minus 5. That's okay, too. And then 18, you should get should get either one of those, okay, as long as I did them right. All right, kind of stall on here. Okay, so here's the formula. Volume equals length times width times height. Have you ever seen that before? If not, you will soon, especially when you get into IM3 when we start doing the solids stuff. So solve for the equation for L, okay? So right here, this says L times W times H. So we'll divide both sides by WH, and then that's your answer right there, okay? So when we do that, uh, we just get we get L all by itself. Okay, the next one says uh, solve for B. So I got the plus sign first, so I'm going to subtract off the MX on both sides, and we get uh, Y minus MX equals just plain old B. There we go, solved it for B. Okay, all right, let's keep going. Remember, you can just pause it by clicking the video right there. Okay, in this formula, we're going to solve for H. All right, so the first thing we do is we can get rid of this 2 by multiplying both sides by 2. Okay, and when we do that, we're going to get that, and then uh, we got to get H all by itself. So it says H is times A plus B, so we're going to divide both sides by A plus B. So there's the answer right there. All right, I think we got one more. Okay, so here we're solving for H again. Okay, so what we do when we're solving equations, we do order of operations backwards. So we do the exponents last if we need to. We do the multiplication last if we need to. We do the addition and subtraction first. So there's H right there. So I'm going to take away this side on both sides right there. So there's that right there. Then we'll divide both sides by 2 pi r, and that's going to give us h equals equals that groovy stuff. All right, you guys. We'll see you in the next video. Take care.